Ahankar or in terminology of Patanjali Muni Asmita. Asmi, I am. <clears throat> now we need solution. I understand that yesterday I mostly spoke about the problem and uh, not enough about the solution. <clears throat> so let's emphasize the solution for this problem. I'll give the definition of uh, false ego ahankar asmita, uh, which is given by uh, Patanjali Muni. Drig darshana shakta yoho ekatmata iva asmita. Asmita or false ego means <clears throat> when you in simple terms, mix the experience with the experience set. We, the soul, uh, which has the ability of experiencing, so used to experience uh, whatever we experience, that we think that we are the act of experience. It has become very clear. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's very simple. <laughs> because we always interact with this world, because we always see, always hear, always smell, always eat. That we definitely do all this. So, all, and, you know, sleep, and do all, all kinds of experiences, undergo all kinds of experiences in this world. Uh, they're so used to it, then uh, it's very difficult for us to separate us uh, who experiences this from this acts or actions of experience. And uh, because we're always doing it, we, we kind of think, that's me, that's me, that's me. Whereas I'm separate. So, <clears throat> uh, and therefore he says, Drik darshana shakta yoho ekatmata iva. We think that, you know, our ability to experience and uh, uh, this, this process of experiencing and me who is the experiencer is the same. Therefore, in um, other traditions, what they do, in other spiritual traditions, what they do, they try to facilitate uh, this process of separating the act of experience from the experiencer. This act of awareness, uh, sorry, uh, the, the awareness, uh, and what happens because I always experience something, and I think that's me, I take it very seriously. <clears throat> you know, something is happening with me, you know, somebody told something about me, and, uh, you know, uh, or uh, what will be in the future. Basically, there are three main factors of stress which continuously produce the stressful emotions. The first factor is time. You know, we're always worried what's going to happen in the future. You know, will Modi win or not? <laughs> or, or maybe Trump? <laughs> Biden, <laughs> whatever. Uh, you know, what will be the crisis, next crisis, ecology, this and that, you know, the time is, is, is a factor of stress uh, because it's a very acute factor of our day-to-day -day experience, what's going to happen, and especially in the future of what I lost, uh, uh, you know, we always dwell either in the future or in the past. <clears throat> And we, because we never 
identify ourselves with this awareness, with the ability to aware about things, we, we hardly ever in future, in, in the present. The second factor of our stress and worry is the condition of our body. Something is always wrong. You know? <laughs> we only forget about body when we hear about Krishna. <laughs> the rest of the time, something goes wrong, you know, this joint or that joint, because we have so many joints, you know, <laughs> there will always be some, uh, some problem or the heart or the stomach or the liver uh, and, or the kidneys. And we are acutely aware of its presence, especially with the passage of time when we become older. You know, we, we start knowing about something which we never knew before, that we have kidneys. We <laughs> 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 blissfully unaware about this fact. <laughs> but all of a sudden it becomes a very serious factor of our life. You know, <laughs> you know my gallbladder. <laughs> so... You know, this pain or that pain, this discomfort or that discomfort. And, uh, so the body is the second factor which always is there in our mind. And the third factor which is uh, always uh, bringing us some unpleasant uh, or stressful emotions is the circumstances. You know, it's too hot now. Or it's too cold, or it's uh, you know the uh, especially of course circumstances as people. You know this. Why did he look at me like this? <laughs> what did he mean by this? What did he mean like this? He just he just had a stomach ache. <laughs> 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 he looked at me like this. Way. It was nothing personal. <laughs> We always, you know, have some concerns about the circumstances. Something is always wrong. This, this or that was, uh, and uh, you know, we always uh, uh, absorb in our, all these circumstances or uh, situations, emotions, and emotions. As I explained to you, and they have this ability to completely swallow our consciousness. They overwhelm us, uh, and uh, the, the more strong they are, the more overwhelming they are. And therefore, we never ourselves. <coughs> we forget this very simple and very vivid and very, you know, very obvious fact that I, the ability to aware of all these things, don't change. I'm the same. No matter what, you know, whoever speaks something about me, I am the same. It doesn't touch me. I am the soul uh, capable of seeing this, and I'm capable also of uh, uh, separating myself from this, from all these experiences. So this is, this is what we always uh, forget, and uh, with give undue importance to what is happening and give uh, uh, less importance, much less importance uh, to uh, undue neglect uh, to ourselves, to our real self. So that's what is happening. You know, so many things happen in our life. We forget most about it. We don't remember all this rubbish. But in the process of experiencing it, it was so important. We don't remember it. Where is it now? You know, we were little children and, you know, we, we had so many serious problems as children. Somebody took our favorite toy. <laughs> How dare he? This, this is my toy. You know, does it influence you at this moment? <laughs> no. But at that moment, it was so serious. It was damn serious. Damn serious. It 
probably transformed our personality. <laughs> <laughs> my childhood trauma, somebody there to take my little, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, what I mean to say, because we give undue importance to the experiences <clears throat> and forget about ourselves, uh, we always dwell in, in this uh, soup of uh, experiencing. Uh, and um, what other traditions do? Other traditions, they, uh, they help to separate us, the soul, uh, with the ability to experience, with the ability to aware, to be aware of everything which is happening uh, from this by more or less artificial means. As I explained, you know, the artificial means in other, uh, I mean, they're not artificial, they're very helpful, they're good, you know, but they say, you know, please, uh, you try to, uh, you know, not to identify with the, all this stuff which around you, uh, with the matter, with the gross matter. You know, it's not you, it's, it's here now with you, with money, with, house with this and that, you know, try to not enjoy too much, not to invest too much of your consciousness into this process. Then they say try uh, not to, uh, you know, limit your contact with the environment, at least for some period of time, you know, go into seclusion, go into retreat, uh, <coughs> regulate your uh, contact with the environment because every time we experience something it affects our consciousness uh, and so we because we're always dwelling in the content of our consciousness we never dwell in the consciousness itself in the soul <laughs> uh, and uh, and then of course they they say you should behave yourself humbly try to be humble uh, n not to to be too proud by your achievements, by your, you know, position, by your diplomas, you know, by your degrees, and PhD, or, you know, what else is there, MIT, or ABC, GBC also, <laughs> you know, you add something to yourself, uh, and dwell in this situation, in this, uh, all the supagis, but actually, you're not this. You, know, you will die, and you know who will remember that you were GBC. <laughs> you will not remember. <laughs> <laughs> who cares about this? You know this or that. You are spirit soul. You will remain. You will be. You are eternal. You are eternal. You, your this individual ability uh, to. Uh, aware about yourself will remain. Uh, the body will be gone, everything will be gone. Uh, all the praises which were there, all the blames which uh, you experienced, that will, that's gone. That's the water under the bridge. It's already so much we experience. Forget about this. So, uh, there is this policy in uh, other spiritual traditions uh, and in our tradition, I, as I explained, that we limit our contact, regulate our contact with the environment. Then we try, uh, you know, <coughs> distance ourselves from all this external stuff, and we uh, try to behave very humbly. Trinada Bisunichinata, Roratisa Bisunichinata, But there is also a very powerful way of doing it by replacing all the stressful emotions which are produced by the act of experience uh, uh, with the emotions of surrender because what bhakti is, bhakti means that we turn away from the external world and we turn ourselves towards God, towards Krishna. So, <clears throat> and the emotions which are uh, produced by this act. Uh, when we turn away from the world and at least try to turn towards 
the Lord, to see Him. And this act is called surrender. I surrender myself. You know, because turning away from the Lord means surrender. From, from the world uh, around us means uh, surrender. So, uh, and this act itself, this desire, this uh, determination uh, to turn away from uh, the world and uh, to establish some relationship with the Lord uh, uh, is very emotional. And if we learn these emotions, if we rehearse these emotions again and again and again, uh, you know, this is my determination. I do want to re-enter into relationship with the Lord, which is reality. I don't want to live in this changing illusion, constantly changing environment which, which doesn't bring me any lasting happiness. I don't want to identify myself as all this, uh, as Prabhupada said, tabernacles. This is the tabernacle food. This is a very old English word. Uh, word. Uh, so, uh, you know, this act is emotion. Emotion is a charge. And this energy of these emotions is very helpful. As I said, it's like a fuel, and uh, if you use this energy of these emotions, uh, then uh, uh, it will be easy for us to, to chant this deep meaning. Uh, Patanjali Muni is his Yoga Sutra. He explains the process of Japa. Uh, he says Japa is a very easy and simple process of achieving Samadhi. He explains there is, you know, difficult, long, protracted process of achieving Samadhi. And then he says that Japa, uh, he says uh, that, you know, if you just chant the name of God, very easy you can uh, achieve Samadhi. But he explains how to do it. He explains the process. <coughs> the process is that uh, Japasta Dharta Bhavan. You uh, repeat again and again and again uh, the name of God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. But not only this. Tadartha Bhavan. You also have to uh, meditate on Artha on the meaning of what you're repeating. Tadartha Bhavana. You have to dwell uh, on this, uh, uh, on the meaning of, you know, this act should be meaningful. Sometimes we do it in a very mechanical way. Yes, yeah, I have to do it, yes, I promise 16 rounds. Not even one bit less. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. No, but we have to understand what is the meaning. The meaning of Lord Krishna, the meaning of Lord Rama, the meaning of Hare, uh, and uh, the meaning of the whole process. And emotions is the meaning. <laughs> if we do it with the emotions, then uh, this act uh, will become meaningful and this sect very quickly change your personality. You know, as I said, because we are this, this vicious circle of karma, uh, we're getting stuck in it, easily getting stuck. In our, you know, <coughs> psychological traits, in our uh, reactions, in our emotions, in our anger, in our greed, in our uh, lust, uh, in our illusions. So, but uh, this is a powerful process uh, to use this emotions of Sharanapati. Yes, my Lord, I'm yours. I don't care about anything else, at least for two hours. You have 22 hours to care about the whole world. Just two hours to care about God. It's a good deal. <laughs> But because the process is so powerful, this two hours is enough, <laughs> you know, to neutralize <laughs> uh, the effect which you will get by interacting with the world. <laughs> but you have to use uh, these two hours very effectively. 
you know, the problem is that, yes, we use these two hours, but not very effectively, that's the problem. <laughs> we are not, you know, getting the full use uh, of this Japa time. Uh, yeah, because we, we can only uh, erase uh, all these uh, experiences which are there and not to dwell in them, not to be absorbed in them, if there is something, you know, something meaningful in what we're doing. One thing to uh, do it, like uh, um, Bhakti Rakshak Siddhar Maharaj, he wrote this beautiful book uh, in Sanskrit and in Bengali, Prapanna Jivanamritam, uh, the book which explains the six limbs of surrender uh, by quoting different, different shastras. And each and every verse of this book uh, is the content uh, which will help us to dwell meaningfully on uh, the process of shastra, or on the process of jhana. Because uh, so many different verses in uh, the scriptures uh, describe uh, this uh, emotions of different people who surrender themselves fully. And by reading these verses, chanting these verses, remembering these verses, uh, we can actually experience the glimpse of their emotions. Like Gajendra. You know, Gajendra completely, for, after so many years of struggle, after so many years of being stuck in this very difficult situation of, uh, you know, fighting with this crocodile, uh, you know, ultimately he realized, you know, the, there is, um, he just remembered, yeah, there is God who can help me. And before he didn't know about this, he didn't remember about this. But uh, ultimately, you know, it became clear to him, yes, there is somebody who can help me. And he took, you know, lotus um, uh, with his, uh, how do you say this? Drunk, yeah. yeah. A lotus and said, take it, take it, take it, Hare Krishna. Uh, and he pronounced these prayers. And these prayers, you know, it's the content of his, uh, of his prapati, of his surrender. <clears throat> so, uh, this is the content. This is the emotional content which will help us uh, to uh, erase all the stress which, uh, which is accumulated in our consciousness, all the childhood traumas. You don't need to go to psychologists. You don't need to spend money for them. If we do it properly, if we do it in a proper way, our consciousness will quickly become very clear and uh, dedicated to the Supreme Lord. So, this is one thing, uh, or the songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, uh, which he wrote specifically for us. Uh, all the songs of Sharanagati, Bhakti Rakshak Maharaj, he, uh, he, he collected all these verses uh, to, to help us, to, <coughs> uh, to feel different aspects of these six limbs of surrender. Because, each and every aspect of this uh, limb, of, of this limbs of surrender, uh, of six limbs of Sharanagati, uh, they are multi-dimensional, dimension. You know, it's, uh, and uh, those great devotees who experience this, they, uh, they experience this reflected in, in, their, in the verses which are recorded in the scriptures. <clears throat> so, uh, I will read a very beautiful part of uh, Jaiva Dharma, which explains <clears throat> uh, this, um, very briefly, explains this uh, five emotions uh, uh, of Sharanagati. Uh, this is what Bhaktivinoda writes. There are six symptoms of self-surrender. The first two are Anukulyasya Sankalpa and Pratikulyasya Varjana. I will not do that which I, uh, I will only do that which is favorable 
for an alloyed bhakti, and I will reject all that is unfavorable. This is called sankalpa. O pratigya, solemn vow. So the first emotion is this solemn vow. Pratigya. I'll do it, no matter what. Sometimes it's difficult, but I'll do it. I will not betray my Lord. Because every time we do something which is displeasing to him, we basically betray him. We basically say, I, I don't care about you. So this, this is basically the determination within us. Yes, uh, the Lord is there. I feel his presence. He is present. He is in my heart. I feel his presence there. So the first emotion is this pratigya. Yes, I will do it. And, of course, sometimes we will fail. But still, we failed. Uh, and after that, what is the conclusion? Uh, I will still do it. Even though I failed, I will still continue doing it because, because what else to do? <laughs> what is the alternative? There is no viable alternative to this. Otherwise, you will be just completely, you know, you will be just while giving our consciousness to the matter, we become matter ourselves. We betray our spiritual, higher spiritual nature. So, the, the first is that, yes, this pratigya, or uh, sankalpa, determination. The third symptom is rakshishya titi vishvasu, faith in Bhagavan as one's protector. Bhagavan is my only protector. I can derive absolutely no benefit from jnana, yoga, and other such practices. Well, it's very difficult for me because I do yoga every day. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we may do this, but ultimately we know that only because Bhagavan allows us to do yoga, we can do yoga. <laughs> And very soon he will not allow us to do yoga because, you know, for how long you can do yoga. Uh, ultimately, we have to understand, we understand this simple fact that if there is anyone who can protect us, it's only him. Uh, everything else is not, uh, is not a very, you know, it's uh, uh, like Prabhupada says, in uh, his uh, translation of the second, uh, in the second uh, account of Shiman Bhagavatam, fallible soldiers. We try to surround ourselves uh, with different protective measures. But as Prabhupada says, they are all fallible soldiers. You know, all these soldiers which we are surrounded by uh, trying to protect ourselves will fall. You know, we may have money, we may have this, we may have relatives. Oh my goodness, we may have wife. Oh, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, this fallible soldiers. Only Bhagavan uh, is the protector. <clears throat> uh, so, this is an expression of trust, Vishwas. So, this is the second emotion. First emotion is determination. Yes, I'll do it. And... You know, if, if internally you really mean it, you immediately feel the energy which will help you to do it. Isn't it? I'll do it. And yeah, I can do it. No problem. The second emotion is Vishwas. Vishwas, the Sanskrit word Vishwas is very special. Shvas means to breathe. And Vishwas, which means trust, uh, means to breathe in a certain way. Like when we are completely, when we feel completely safe and protected and secure, like a little child on the lap of the mother. The child may be crying, the child may be frantic, you know, and uh, because he's frantic, uh, his breathing is completely chaotic. As soon as he <coughs> is put on the lap of the mother and he is uh, you know, hearing the beat of the mother's heart, 
it becomes very peaceful and, and very soon he falls asleep. <laughs> Deep, a peaceful, beautiful breathing. So Vishwas is this peaceful breathing when you feel that you're protected. Vishwas trust is this condition when you feel there is nothing to fear. Even at this moment of time, if a tiger will appear now, you know, I will say Hare Krishna and let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have this Vishwas, yes, there is somebody who protects me. I don't have to worry about this. The only thing which I have to do is just to breathe very peacefully. I mean, uh, trust. Again, I don't say it's easy, but uh, what I mean to say is that uh, we can rehearse it. That's the emotions which we can rehearse. This is the third emotion, the emotion of complete trust, complete assurance that I'm safe because Bhagavan is there. I'm the soul will always be with him. He's there with me. So, the fourth symptom is Gopritri Varanam, deliberate acceptance of Bhagavan as one's maintainer. I cannot obtain anything or even maintain myself by my own endeavor. I will serve Bhagavan as far as I am able uh, and he will take care of me. So, that's me. What I can do, I can serve. That I can always do. I can always do something for Bhagavan. I can always help somebody. I can always, if, if uh, deeply inside I feel that, yes, I'm, I'm the servant of Bhagavan, then, and then he will take care of me. I don't have to worry myself. <clears throat> and, you know, so many times we experience this. You know, there's some, some problem is there, but somehow, uh, miraculously, it's been resolved. <coughs> Uh, so this deep understanding deep down that uh, you know Bhagavan uh, will take care of me uh, then uh, uh, it's the emotion of Gopritve uh, Varanam uh, that uh, yeah he will, he will maintain you know Tukaram uh, is a famous example of this he had his wife Janabai, and she was always nagging, you know, there's not enough in our house. And he used to say, let's sing some bhajan for Bhagavan, and let's see what's going on. The saying, we don't have enough rice, we don't have enough this, and then he said, let's sing some bhajan. <laughs> uh, somehow or other, everyone is maintained by the Lord. <laughs> You know, the big, big elephant is living in the jungles and he needs some hundred kilos of food every day, you know. He is not so worried. Uh, somehow or other, he is being maintained. Everyone is being maintained. You know. Yeah, we should do the needful, but uh, at the same time, internally, we should have this conviction. Yes, I am being maintained. He, he gave me this body. He made this arrangement. He made this beautiful world. He gave me the air to breathe, the water to drink, the food to eat. Everything is there. Uh, no need to worry. So, uh, this is what is meant by dependence. Nirbharata. <coughs> but Thakur translates this uh, uh, limp of surrender, Varana, as a complete dependence. Nirbharata. The internal emotion of dependence. Yes, I am dependent on Bhagavan, and uh, it means that he will maintain. As when I said, as I explained to you, this is the complete uh, surrender. Everything else is just a particular case of surrender, but this is the complete uh, surrender which is there. <clears throat> the fifth symptom is Atmanik Shepa, uh, surrender proper. And in Sri Sampradaya, 
And when they explain, and they are very emphatic about this, they, they say actually that Sharanagati is, is Bhakti. <laughs> uh, but they say that Angi of Sharanagati is the Sattvanik Shepa or Manivedra. Uh, we have different conception, uh, but uh, you know we can argue. But it's not the point of arguing. Uh, Atmanik Shapa means Atmanik Shapa means Nik Shapa basically means to throw oneself. Atmanik Shapa means uh, I give my Atma uh, to the Lord, and uh, there is two kinds of. Atmanik Shepa or Atmanivedana. Because one kind of Atmanivedana or Atmanik Shepa, the first kind of Atmanik Shepa, is included in the six limbs of Sharanagati. And another one is included as the last limb of the nine kinds of bhakti, right? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedana. So, in the beginning I said that uh, Sharanagati is the preliminary stage of Bhakti and then after uh, explaining everything, uh, what is Bhakti, starting with Shravanam, we again say uh, Admanivedan. So what is this? Uh, there are different, uh, it's two different things. When we are talking about Atmanik Shepa in Sharanagati, uh, it's the word is the same, Atmanivedana or Atmanik Shepa is the same. But because in the beginning we don't know what is our Atma, it's very difficult to give our Atma proper, the soul proper to, to the Lord, because we don't know what is our Atma. <laughs> so Atmanik Shepa means uh, uh, Atma, what we think we are now, and now we identify with the body and with the mind. Atmanik Shepa in Sharanagati means I give my body, my mind and my speech to the Lord. Because there is no other Atma. I don't know what is, what is this. If I do some surgical operation, is it somewhere there? <laughs> No, we cannot give Atma proper to the Lord, but we can give the body, right? We can serve by our body, we can serve by our speech, we can serve by our mind. Uh, this is Atma Nikshepa in, uh, in Sharanagati. It basically means whatever I have is yours. The body I have is yours body. Nice body. I maintain this body because it's your property. I take care of it. Uh, you know, I take care of my health and everything else because it's your property. But it's it's yours. My mind is yours. My uh, my uh, speech is yours. Everything is yours. I'm doing. It. But then, when we do uh, when we do the proper bhakti, starting with shravanam kirtana, vishnu smaranam, etc., at the end, we understand. I am the spirit soul. I'm a beautiful little. Yo, in my Manjari Swarup, or whatever, uh, whatever Swarup is there, maybe you are some friend of Krishna, whoever, uh, on the level of uh, Asakti, uh, it will become very clear. Ainanda Tanuja Kinkaram. Uh, Lord Chaitanya explains the uh, stage of Asakti uh, by saying, I'm your little kinker, little tiny kinker, a little uh, uh, servant of yours. So uh, this second Atmani Vedana uh, is this real Atmani Vedana when we know who I am in my spiritual swarup and how to serve the Lord and my spiritual uh, identity uh, by my spiritual emotions, by interacting with Him uh, in this uh, emotional uh, exchange. So that's why it's very interesting uh, when we do Navadvip Dam Parikrama. Navadvip Dam uh, is a, a, 
representation of nine processes of bhakti. So we start Navadvim Dram Parikrama where? In Antardvip. Antardvip is the symbol of what? Atmanive. We started Yoga Pit in Antardvip, which is the symbol of Atmanivedan. It basically means first kind of Atmanivedan or Atmanik Shepa from Sharanagati. We do everything for the Lord. And then we go through all the processes of devotional service through all nine islands. And when do we finish our Navadvip uh, Parikrama? In Antardvip. In the same place. We come uh, to the Atmanivedanam again. <laughs> but this Atmanivedanam is real Atmanivedanam. This is the real stuff. So that's the, the idea behind this Navadvim Dham Parikrama. When we uh, ultimately understand what is our Atman, how to serve the Lord. Uh, and um, the sixth symptom, uh, yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, Bhakti Thakur continues. Who am I? I am His. My duty is to fulfill His desire. This is submission of the self, Atmani Veda. Submission, I am yours. And the sixth symptom is Harpanye, meekness. I am wretched, insignificant, and materially destitute. This is what is meant by humility, Karpanya or Dainya. So yes, I'm I'm what I am, you know. Uh, but uh, I already gave myself to you, and you do whatever you like with with me, the way I am now. <laughs> you know, I gave myself to you, and uh, this is the uh, fifth emotion. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur basically says that uh, within the six limbs of surrender, there are five emotions. He uh, lumps together Anupulyasya Sankalpata and Pratikulyasya Vajjana and we should try to feel this, to, to really feel this on, on the level of, of the soul. <laughs> uh, and that's why Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote Sharanagati uh, songs. Because music is the most powerful means to evoke emotions. When we, when we hear music, musical tune, and the musical tunes themselves, emotions are already there. If you do it properly, of course, if you do it not very properly, you may not. But still, you know, the music, rhythm, and the mood uh, will give you very, uh, you know, vivid understanding what it means. And by taking these emotions and chanting with this emotion, you, you, you feel this emotion, chanting the holy name with this emotion, uh, you will just whew, go to Christ. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is how it works. This is the, this is the idea which, which was trying to present to you and then you will easily forget everything because you will be so happy so blissful like yesterday during the kirtan you know did, did you have any worries what's going to happen tomorrow or, you know, when, and during the old age or, <laughs> no, forget it forget it I'm yours I surrender to you, you take care of me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, So you have the lifetime to rehearse it. And then, in the moment of death, you will say, Hare Krishna. The rocket will take off. So that's uh, basically what it is. And I wanted also to, uh, to read one more little quote from Jaiva Dharma by Dr. How the process, it's a very positive quote, how the, the process of changing works.
Yes. <coughs> Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains at the end of the section of Jaya Dharma, uh, which is devoted to uh, Nama Bhajan, the most important process. He explains the gradual process of uh, uh, getting rid of the offenses. <coughs> Vijaya is asking, Prabhu, I understand that the result of Nama Parada is very dangerous, but is there any good result derived from the names that are uttered offensively? So, in other words, if we still do what we used to do, you know, neglectfully chant Hare Krishna while driving the car, or, you know, by thinking about all kinds of stuff in the universe and uh, by worrying about, you know, who will be elected, who will be the next president of the United States. And, you know, sometimes you always think about this. <laughs> Even not American devotees. <laughs> what to speak about American devotees? They God himself ordered them to think about it. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, this Vijayi is asking, is there any use of this sort of check? And uh, the answer is very uh, optimistic and positive. Babaji says, yes. Sri Nama will give whatever result Nama Parada, uh, Nama Paradi desires while he is changing the names, but it will not award Krishna Prem. At the same time, the offender has to suffer the result of his offenses against uh, Sri Nama. One who commits offenses to Sri Nama and who takes the name with a wicked mentality will receive the following results. Please listen very carefully. In the beginning, Nama Paradi takes Sri Nama with a wicked mentality, but after some time he occasionally chants Nama free from wickedness. Very interesting. Initially we are completely absorbed by this, but Nama is very powerful. And when we chant, we continue chant despite of all these problems, despite of all this inattentiveness, despite everything else. Uh, occasionally, uh, we will chant some seemingly pure holy name, a little pure holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. This chanting of the name without a crooked mentality causes him to accumulate Sukriti. So, when we have all these ideas or whatever, and they are you know, not very attentive and everything. That's not very, very useful, but still, in between, we sometimes chant with some good, favorable mood. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, oh Krishna, oh I love you. Uh, I don't know who you are, but they say you are very nice. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, you chant with this mood, uh, as, uh, as Bhaktivinoda says, free from crookedness, from crooked uh, mentality, and uh, that will give you some Sukriti. And slowly, slowly, as that Sukriti increases, its influence enables him to receive the association of saintly people who are chanting Shudanam. The influence of Satsanga it use, induces Nama Paradi to chant Sri Nama constantly, uh, uh, which frees him from Nama Paradas. Even people who had a great desire for liberation have gradually become Hari Bhaktas by taking shelter of this process. So it brings you to some association, and in this association you get the proper mood. And by getting the proper mood, uh, you, you actually start chanting happily. You're not bored. You're happy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare 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 
let's read a few more lines. Vijay asking the question, if simply chanting one name can successfully remove all sins, why is it necessary to chant Sri Nama constantly like an unbroken stream of fragrant oil? Babaji, the inner self and dealing of the Nama Paradhi are always crooked in every way. He is opposed to Krishna, Bahirmukha, by nature, and therefore he has no taste uh, for saintly people or auspicious paraphernalia and times related to Bhagavad. Like it's very difficult to get up for, you know, Brahma Muhurta, which is favorable time for chanting, and therefore we chant during the, you know, our driving period and japa period somehow or other coincide. <laughs> Um, this natural inclination is towards his natural inclination is towards unworthy people, things, conclusions, and activities. Like we attach to see some internet news, you know. <coughs> some people, some devotees, sometimes attach. <coughs> uh, because by uh, knowing all the news, you know what is going on. <coughs> if Kejriwal is still in the prison. <laughs> <laughs> we get the false sense of control, you know, as if anything depends whether on you, whether Kejriwal will be released or not. <laughs> you know, knowing the news gives you this false sense. I'm, I'm in control. I know what's going on. You know, I, uh, I'm in control. So, uh, this is what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says here. There is a natural inclination for something which is not very helpful. <coughs> to, you know, to get some stuff into the mind which is not really good. Uh, <coughs> so, his natural inclination is towards unworthy people, things, <coughs> conclusions and activities. However, if he always chants Sri Nama, he will have no time for unwanted association and activities and because he is not in that association his chanting of Shinama will gradually become pure and give him a taste for auspicious objects. So basically Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that the process of purifying from the offenses is twofold. One is that it brings you to a good association, a saintly association and this saintly association gives you the uh, push, the enthusiasm to chant more. And by chanting more, you avoid doing nonsense. And by avoiding doing nonsense, very quickly uh, you, uh, uh, you will get the taste for the holy name. <coughs> so um, otherwise, you know, and therefore Prabhupada said, Actually, we should chant 24 hours a day, but, you know, minimum 16 rounds. Uh, but 16 rounds is a bare minimum. The rest is, you, know, you still have to try to chant within your mind. Of course, you have to do so many duties, that's fine. But, you know, within the mind, uh, this feeling should be there. I'm Krishna, and I'm with you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Rama. And in this way, we will be protected. We will be mm, completely, uh, how to say, inoculated. We will get a good injection of vaccine of the holy name. And we will be uh, protected from the infection of um, material contamination. And uh, this is a beautiful simple process but there is some science behind it and I was trying to explain this science how it works. So thank you very much. Thank you. So we can chant a little more or shall we chant Jaka or shall Sankirtan? Chant Jaka. Questions? Questions we have? Yeah. <laughs> More push they have so many. So many. Let's chant. <laughs> Still have half an hour, so we can we 
can practice this because the, the better we practice better it is. So with this five emotions which I try to describe, try to try to feel <coughs> what is there, try to feel this which was or Nirbharata or Sankalpa or Doindya by, by Chaitanya. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nidhananda Shri Advaita Dadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare
First round we chant with pratigya, with the solemn vow, with the sankalpa, with the determination to do everything which is pleasing to the Lord and reject everything which is displeasing. So that's the emotion. <coughs> Let's do it.
second round we will do is the emotion of each pass. Complete trust. <coughs> Krishna protected me in many circumstances. Krishna took care of me. Krishna brought me to the society of devotees. Krishna always gives me protection. I have nothing to worry about. He will protect me at the moment of death. No matter how painful it will be, He will relieve the pain. He will come to me. And the moment I come in front of Him, all what I was doing for Him will bear the fruits and I will feel completely safe and protected um, in His presence, in His association. And even now He is with me. He is looking at me. And He is waiting when I turn my face to Him. So there is nothing for me to worry about. Uh, nothing about time, nothing about body, nothing about the circumstances. Uh, I am chanting with this Vishwas, complete trust in His protection. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Chanting beyond the time because you are beyond the time and Krishna is beyond the time. <coughs> Body is not very significant and not very important. Just relax in complete trust that Krishna is with you right now. Hare
responsibility on our shoulders therefore our shoulders become very tense the tension immense tension is accumulated here because we always like a donkey uh, carry some heavy weights of responsibility from now on you're completely free no problem near Bharat I'm a cow I'm a salt cow. I was sold to Krishna, he is my master. I will do whatever little milk I have, I'll give to him. No problem. Whatever I'm capable of doing, I will do. You know, sometimes cows give a lot of milk. Sometimes cow give just a few drops of milk. Well, cow is cow. Cow is doing whatever she can do. So, I'm a salt cow, I'm his cow. I will do whatever I can, and he will do the rest. No problem. Dear Bharat, I completely depend on him. And I will try, conscientiously try to do whatever I can. I will serve him by my body, by my words, by my thinking process. But ultimately, uh, he will compensate Yoga Kshema Maham Yaham He will himself give me what I need This is the mood of Sharanagati Let's chant Vantra Mountain this way Hare Krishna Hare
One more last round. In this round we will chant to the mood of Karpanya I'm the object of Krishna's pity. I've been trying to surrender to him. I've been trying to overcome my habits. I've been trying to chant this concentration. It didn't work. For many years I'm trying to practice this Krishna Consciousness, still I'm in the same place. Still I feel that there are same things in me. I'm so useless. I'm totally, completely useless. Yes, I did something. Yes, something changed, but not as much as I would like to. I still don't feel prema. I still don't feel even strong attachment to Him. I'm going through this holy places like Vrindavan, and I don't see him, I only see garbage. <coughs> I have no hope. My only hope is him, his pity. I'm Dina, I'm fallen. Uh, I'm still very much attached to matter, very much attached to body, very much attached to material emotions. I have so many other problems which I have. But I also have hope. He is most merciful. <coughs> and I will try to behave accordingly. I will never be proud. I will never try to show how great I am. Always I will try to serve the devotees to prove to Krishna that I need his mercy. My service to others is only proof to him uh, that I need, I, I need his mercy. Uh, and only by his mercy I can achieve.
achieve something. So that's the mood of Carpania. And let's chant in this other humility in the last round for this moment. <laughs> Thank you. 